Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. In this episode, we're going to be exploring a few cases of plagiarism, and this time, we're looking at several times when Pokemon was blatantly copied. Pokemon is a massive franchise that continues to be one of the highest grossing media licenses of all time. It's also an incredibly simple concept that isn't too hard to copy, though matching the series' stellar marketing strategy might not be quite so simple. But that didn't stop gaming companies from trying. Robopon is a video game series created by Hudson Soft and published by Atlas. It seems Hudson had the ambition to rival Pokemon and attempted to do so on the Game Boy Color. While Robopon did get a North American localization, only one version of the game was published. In Japan, the game was released using the same strategy as Pokemon, with two versions, both Sun and Star, which were released together and later followed by a third Moon version just a year later. And as you might have guessed, America had to make do with just the Sun version. Robopon follows the story of a boy named Cody who travels to Prombo Island in order to collect a bunch of robots known as Robopon, whilst also battling and defeating the Legend 7, the highest ranking Robopon collectors on the island. The game was published in North America just a few months after the second generation of Pokemon games, which led to many noticing key similarities between both series. Robopon's artwork looks almost like unfinished art lifted from the first Pokemon games. The battle system has elemental weaknesses that play out almost entirely like in Pokemon, and to top it off, there's 150 different collectible creatures, some of which evolve into upgraded forms. The franchise would continue, with sequels released for the Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Advance, which looks to have made a concerted effort to distance the series from Pokemon. But to be fair, emulating a formula isn't quite plagiarism, neither is using similar game mechanics. Directly tracing or editing artwork from another game, however, definitely is plagiarism. If you haven't noticed it already, we'd like to point out that Robopon's player character is almost an exact copy of Red from Pokemon. In fact, only 22 pixels have been altered from Red's sprite to make Robopon's player around a 10% difference overall. Now for a bit of a change of pace, we're taking a look at a book that ripped off Pokemon rather blatantly. As usual, it isn't just video games that take inspiration from other games, as can be seen with the book 500 Manga Creatures. Created by British Chinese manga artist Yishan Li, this how to draw style book doesn't shy away from its inspirations. Although 500 Manga Creatures presents itself as an instructional book, it's more of a collection of royalty free clip art for people to use. It has some questionable monster designs right on the front cover, with two creatures that noticeably draw inspiration from the Pokemon Dragonair and Caterpie. But what starts out as a set of monster designs that harmlessly pay homage to Pokemon quickly evolves into a blatant and full-on plagiarism. Most people can only see the monsters on the cover, as the book can't be found in any digital format online. So, to give all you guys a sample, we bought a copy of the book and explored what was within. Hundreds of monsters in the book take elements from Pokemon, but around 50 or so are more or less blatantly plagiarized. We honestly could spend the entire video looking at these monsters and their <coughs> inspirations, but we'll just give you a preview for now. Notable ripoffs in the book are that of Shuckle, Spoink, Hoot Hoot, Lapras, Ninetales, Hippodon, Ampharos, Magby, Whalmer, Quillfish, Dugtrio, Misdreavus, Zapdos, Lilip, Cradley, Swablu, Alteria, and Deoxys' defense form. We might post more of them on Twitter if you'd like, so if you do want more, let us know in the comments down below. The book is also accompanied by a CD-ROM featuring the biggest collection of manga clip art ever collected on one disc, a vast collection of high-res, 300 dpi jpeg images that are ready to use in any project so if you ever need to plagiarize pokemon at record speed this is the cd for you the description of the book also shows that lee unsurprisingly was well aware of the similarities between these pokemon lookalikes and the resemblance to various other franchises throughout the book with the description reading an enormous range of creatures are included, from soft and cuddly chibi and kawaii characters to Digimon and Pokemon-style monsters, aliens, and giant mechanical robots. So at least there's that. Another side of Pokemon that's been incredibly popular over the past few years encourages everyone to go out and explore the world. Pokemon Go is perhaps the most popular Pokemon title of all time, and mostly due to this extreme success, we've seen several games try to tackle the concept of an augmented reality collectathon. 
Everyone wants a piece, including Harry Potter, Minecraft, and of course, straight up Pokemon bootlegs. There's even one specimen that makes only a mild, shameless effort to differentiate itself. Let's Hunt Monsters directly copies Pokemon Go in so many aspects of its design that it's probably easier to explain that the only major difference between both games is that Pokemon Go has Pokemon in it, while Let's Hunt Monsters on the other hand has Chinese mythological monsters. The game's art style, mechanics, design, basically everything is directly taken from the Pokemon counterpart. Rather than Pokestops, the player stops by prayer drums. Rather than Pokeballs, the player throws spirit orbs. The goal is ultimately to capture creatures, aided by feeding them fruits so that you can form a team to beat a gym, just like in Pokemon. Pokemon Go was created by Niantic. While Let's Hunt Monsters is actually a strange choice for a game to rip off Pokemon, considering its developers are Tencent, a company who actually hold the rights to create Pokemon games for publication in China. Pokemon Go has never been available in the country, despite its dominance over several years of operation. There are a few reasons for why this is. Firstly, it's China and China blocked Google Maps. Considering this is the way in which Pokemon Go operates, it simply wouldn't work. China also said in 2017 that they simply wouldn't allow Pokemon Go in the country, stating, Given overseas consumer experiences and cases, the game presents a big social risk, such as posing a threat to geographical information security, public transport safety, and personal safety. Let's Hunt Monsters wasn't the first game in China to try and cash in on the Pokemon Go hype. In fact, there were a few popular bootlegs back in its early days in 2016. A flood of clones hit the Chinese mobile market, leading to the government enforcing stronger regulation on GPS-centric games. This did lead to one new mechanic within Let's Hunt Monsters, however, which forces the player to stop when movement is detected on the phone. The game locks the player out for three seconds, but these pop-ups are prevented for five minutes after a warning is issued, showing that Tencent isn't really doing everything to prevent the player from wandering around during gameplay, as it is a pivotal element to the Pokemon Go experience, if not the entire point. Let's Hunt Monsters found itself as one of the top downloaded iOS apps in China shortly after launch, but it didn't appear to have the same sticking power of Pokemon. One thing that Tencent's game does hold some potential with, though, is its monsters. Their designs might not be entirely consistent, as is the case with Pokemon, but they do include pop culture icons in China as obtainable creatures, including Tencent's own penguin mascot. At least Tencent tried to form their own creatures for Let's Hunt Monsters, whilst this next game didn't even try and look like a different product. Capsmon Adventure Brave Heroes Assemble was discovered on the Microsoft Store in early 2020, using advertising artwork that is quite simply Pokemon artwork, including characters like Ash, Misty, and Professor Oak, never mind the variety of Pokemon alongside them. Published by a team called Anime Games, the game's description doesn't really explain much of anything, reading like a Google translation from 2001. It says, Capsmon Adventure is the first highly reproduced childhood strategy role-playing online game. Various characteristics of the elves, the eight attributes of each other to overcome each other, the unique skills of the elves and the super collision of unique matching, unique talents, personalization to develop gorgeous transformations, thousands of lineups can be formed at will, and even more cute elves' unique equipment belts become stronger. Take your pet and start fantasy journey of the strongest trainer. The game has since been removed, but if the review left by Microsoft user Barabaz is anything to go by, it seems that the game doesn't have any actual gameplay, playing itself as the player micromanages resources. And of course, these resources can be bought using microtransactions. We can only assume that Nintendo or the Pokemon Company cracked down on developer anime games' thinly veiled attempt to steal their audience, and based on what we can assume the game offers, we can't say it's really a loss. And now it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia. Today, we're looking at the blue blur, Sonic the Hedgehog, more specifically, Sonic 2 on Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 made noteworthy changes over the first game, with one of the most noticeable improvements being that Sonic could now spin dash out of a crouch instead of merely turning into a ball after reaching high speed, like in Sonic 1. What might surprise you, however, is that this improvement wasn't just designers improving on their past work, but it was actually a result of complaints from fans. 
According to a Sonic Team interview in the July 1997 edition of Sega Magazine, developer Yuji Naka only added the spin dash move to make parts of the game easier and less frustrating after a lot of criticism of Sonic the Hedgehog. Naka told the magazine, As for our new additions to Sonic 2, they began and grew out of our dissatisfactions from the first game. The idea for the Super Spin Dash, for instance, came directly from one of those complaints. Namely, that the beginners couldn't do the loop-de-loops very well, and if they made a mistake, they couldn't get the momentum back to loop through it. That was annoying. So, what if he could dash from a stopped position? Then we had the image of him spinning in a ball to accelerate, and rendering it graphically helped the idea take further shape. Who knew that reading comments could lead to such great things? Did you also know that a Russian girl plagiarized the entirety of Ocarina of Time in a best-selling book? Or that one title blatantly ripped off Mario Kart 7? For more facts, check out our videos on Zelda plagiarism and Mario plagiarism. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For more video game facts and trivia, keep an eye out for old Santa Claus, because he's coming for you. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be as sinister as it sounded. Merry Christmas. Have a great uh, Happy New Year as well.